but how many of you, let's say, have a good networking background? Because this talk is mainly about network. OK, something like half of it. So now, how many of you knows about IPv6? Oh, this is cool. Because <laughs> I will be able then to skip a couple of slides. So first, a few words about myself. So I'm working for Cisco Systems. I've been there for 12 years now, and doing mainly IPv6 security for three to four years now. And running IPv6 at home for I don't know, six, seven years, and help a Belgian university to deploy IPv6 on their network. So if you wonder where I'm coming from, OK, uh, obviously my last name is what we say in Belgium, Dutch. You may wonder why my accent is not Dutch. That's because I'm coming really from this town, right? Uh, maybe you have noticed a can. I mean, all the speakers get this nice gift from the organizer, which includes a can of Jupiler. And I'm basically coming from a um, city which is nearby this brewery there. Anyway, so what I would like to say to you, and again, um, feel free to challenge me, right? Uh, you already know IPv6, you know about security. If you don't like what I say, please voice it, right? I mean, we are there for e information exchange and maybe some interaction as well. So the first part will be very fast because most of you know about IPv6, which is pretty cool. Then we go about shared issue. IPv6 is not that different compared to IPv4, which is the IP protocol that we, all of us are running for years. So very similar, meaning as well the same vulnerabilities and the same mitigation techniques. Then the next step, we go to specific IPv6 issue. Stuff, vulnerabilities that do not exist in IPv4, so that are new. Not so many of them. OK, the specific issue. And then a few words about what is the status of all the products all the firewalls, IPS, in the, the field of IPv6. Are there as potential, as many features as IPv4, for instance? So for those of you that do not know IPv6, IPv6 is the next generation of protocol that runs over the internet. Okay, it has been standardized in 97 or something, a very, very old time. And you see the curve there, the, the blue curve is the number of what we say slash eight. So the numbers of net, big, big, big networks, right? The first number in an IPv4 address. And how many of them are still available for use? And this is the blue curve, right? And if you look at the left part, this is basically uh, an excerpt, so um, a zoom on it. And you will see that around 2011, there is no such block anymore meaning that we cannot add any more new IPv4 addresses on the network. Okay? Just to, stay you, to show you in another way, which is more interesting. This is a graph done by a colleague of mine, which is called uh, Tony Ein. And it's basically an 8 by 8, uh, 16 by 16, sorry, matrix, which is 256, which represents each and every slash eight prefix in the world. Okay? All the addresses that you are using in IPv4 are somewhere there. In blue, it means that this block is already in use. In green, it's free, available for use. And we are there in January 2000. Top right, if you've got good eyes and a good networking background, this is all the multicast address, the class E and the class D. Okay? So we cannot touch them. So now I press a key. And a nice animation. One second represents one year. And you will see the consumption rate. OK, we are in 2000. Don't forget 2000. In 2001, there is a big bubble. So there's a slowdown, of course. Okay? Uh, if the economy is down, people are investing less and buying less PC and IP address. So let's go. 2001, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, seven, eight, nine this year, now, first of January next year, 2011. Okay? And it's a call for action, gentlemen. Only one block left. 
Okay? We don't know, of course, this is prediction, right? We don't know exactly when it will be happening. In the green part, this block is even reserved by the IETF. We cannot touch it. Right? It's reserved for anything that could happen. So in 2011, we cannot get, let's say, I'm oversimplifying here, we cannot get a, any more IPv4 address. So we need to do something. Okay? And as the numbers, the 32 bits of an IPv4 address is, are not enough, we need to put more bits. And this is basically what IPv6 is. So IPv6 is IPv4 with much bigger addresses. Currently, this is the Amsterdam exchange, so where a lot of traffic within Europe is going through between two service providers. And you can see that, that's a graph I, I pasted from yesterday, the traffic in Amsterdam is only one gig. Not so big, right? Currently, IPv6 is still not very well deployed. But things are changing fast because people start to realize. So they start deploying networks <coughs> with v6. So it's time as well to understand the security implication of running an IPv6 network. Okay, so listen here. So for you that maybe don't know IPv6, it's not different what we are using in IPv4. Everything which is layer 2, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, for instance, a gentleman who deployed V6 over the Wi-Fi here has nothing to do with Wi-Fi, right? It works as well. Anything which is above IP, so TCP, UDP, anything, is exactly the same. Okay? Nothing has changed there. All the routing protocols, OSPF and blah, blah, are mostly identical. There are only four big changes. And the changes, of course, match bigger addresses. I shall come back on this. So 128 bits compared to 32 bits. So we can put more PCs and more hosts. Okay. Interesting for security. We can have now multiple addresses per host. In IPv4, you have one and only one IPv4 address per host. Okay. If you have multiple, it means that you are a router. On V6, each and every one has got multiple V6 addresses. So my phone here, right, it runs Windows Mobile, and by using the Wi-Fi here, it's got V6, it's got two addresses already. Okay? Bare minimum. They also done something in V6 to simplify the task of routers. Okay? If you want to do some options in V4, the IPv4 header is varying size. It can be 20 bytes, 24 bytes, 28 bytes, and changing all the time which is not easy for a router to act upon. So in V6, what they've done, they said the header itself on the, on the cable is six length. And if you want to put options, and I shall give you some example, for instance, of fragmentation of post source routing, you insert header, okay, between the IPv6 header and the TCP and UDP. If you have ever looked at the presentation where the IPsec structure is explained, Right? Or you put IPsec into an IPv4 packet. You remember we put AH, ESP between the IP header and the TCP? That's exactly the same concept. And I shall come back on this later as well. ARP, which is the protocol used in IPv4 to discover the mapping between a MAC address, or Ethernet address, and an IPv4 address, is disappeared and is replaced now by something called neighbor discovery protocol. So not so many change, right? Four of them. And a lot of this is security implication. So talking about the addresses, just to give you an idea. So I can be academic, like this one. This is this number. I have no clue how to pronounce it, compared to basically something 4 billion. Okay, the top number is the number of IPv6 addresses. And the bottom number is the number of IPv4 addresses in the world. So now we can do it in another way. And the other way is simply, look at this. That's an atom. Okay? I guess you have not very good eyes, so you need a lens to see the atoms. And let's assume now that each and every atom represents the complete set of IPv4 addresses currently. So the 4 billion. Okay? So we say 4 billion of IPv4 addresses is one atom. To see the numbers of IPv6 addresses, it means 80 tons 